More on this story, we welcome Matthew Bryden to the program. He's head of the think tank Sahan Research and a Horn of Africa expert. Thank you so much for being with us on France 24. Now, the likely culprit here is Al-Shabaab. What does their current presence look like inside Somalia? Their current presence is um, extensive across the sub southern part of the country. Uh, basically, most of southern Somalia is a governance vacuum. And so, although al-Shabaab doesn't actually control that territory, it has free reign to move and operate. It also has a presence in major towns, including Mogadishu uh, and others nominally controlled by the government, where it acts as a, as a shadow government, collecting taxes, dispensing justice. Um, and so, it has a, a sort of pervasive presence, but um, I wouldn't say much territory under its control. It appears that most of the victims in this latest attack were university students. Why target civilians and not the military or government? At the moment, we don't know what the target was. This was a checkpoint uh, on the outskirts of Mogadishu. And as in 2017, um, it's quite possible that the target was actually somewhere within the city and that the truck blew up because it was uh, facing inspection at a checkpoint. At this stage, we don't know. But I think it's too early to say that university students or, uh, or the checkpoint itself were the target. And the fact that we haven't seen a claim of responsibility from al-Shabaab fits a historical pattern, where when a, a bomb goes off in the wrong place or kills lots of civilians um, in a way that wasn't intended, uh, they do not take responsibility for those attacks, even though they are the ones most likely to be behind it. Thank you for clearing that up. Uh, this is a group that has carried out huge attacks in the past, as we mentioned, the one in 2017 that killed nearly 600 people. Are authorities not allocating enough resources, or where is the, wink, the, the weak link, rather, in the fight against these extremists? I think there are two key problems. One is that the, the Somali government is promoting a kinetic uh, approach to this war, as though al-Shabaab mm -hmm. is going to be defeated with more guns, more ammunition, more weapons. Um, this is not that type of conflict. It's, it's an underground insurgency. It needs to be dealt with um, as an intelligence-led conflict, and it needs uh, greater involvement of the Somali population, many of whom do not support the current government. The second problem is that the current government in Mogadishu is trying to exert its control over regional administrations across the country. And much of the army and the security establishment is deployed to impose control on effectively allied governments within Somalia and not deployed to fight al-Shabaab. So the government's attention is not focused on defeating uh, the group that was probably behind this atrocity. And what about international help? Is, is Are other African nations or uh, countries in other countries uh, and other continents helping out in the fight against these insurgents? Absolutely. Um, there is a, an African Union force uh, called AMISOM of more than 20,000 African troops in Somalia protecting uh, many of the major towns in the south. Um, if that force were not present, uh, then it's highly unlikely that the current Somali government would even exist. Uh, it would be a government in exile um, and be overrun. Um, and then there is a tremendous amount of Western support to the, uh, the Somali federal government forces. Uh, Turkey and Qatar are also supporting the federal government. I think the issue here is that much of the fighting needs to be done in the regions by Somalia's regional governments, uh, really where the rubber meets the road. And all of the resources are being absorbed in Mogadishu. We're really not seeing the kind of support needed out in the regions where the fight against al-Shabaab is taking place. Matthew Bryden of the think tank Sahan Research, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us.